I found the intro like that. We are the wings, we are the wings, come join the club. Join the club. And I was like, oh my yes. god, this is the best song. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think it was this um, this situation where we didn't have a lot of merch that we appreciate too much the little yeah. <laughs> we have. Yes. Because in Mexico, again, without advertising, without telling anybody, just they started to um, popping up, um, I don't know, this ice, um, I, what is that name? Like ice cream? Yeah, like an ice cream, like an yeah. ice cream uh, of Wings Club. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? That's yeah, amazing. I, yeah, I just went with my mom um, to buy ice cream. And they have these like, like that lollipop, but in ice cream. I don't know how to say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And they have like from Stella and from Bloom. Um, and inside you had stickers. So that was the best thing ever. <laughs> that was so fun! Yeah. yeah, I didn't know what they got up with that, but <laughs> but that was so fun. In Mexico, I don't know, the DVDs never came out complete. Not even the second season complete. Really? I, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm That's really mad. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I know in America, um, I have all of the DVDs until... Um, the last half of season three because that's when um the four kids dub lost his mm -hmm. licensing to dub the the franchise and so um when they didn't renew the the dvd that they had in production <laughs> never came out and so no. literally literally i had it pre-ordered and like it oh never came out no, so, that's so yeah, sad it was very sad and so um yeah it was called fire and flame and it had a like a picture of bloom and like valtor oh and my like God. it was so cool and it was gonna be so great and i would have had the complete first three seasons on dvd but now oh here i am 17 years <laughs> later <laughs> yeah. i still oh don't God. have it still oh don't have it <laughs> Oh no, that's so sad, and that's that, that's so sad. I, I was I'm very happy that you grew up with four kids version. I I remember um, I didn't knew uh, four kids uh, version existed, but when I knew, I was like very excited. I was like, oh my god, this is another version. It's like a multiverse. I don't know. Yeah, I, I was honestly. very excited. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> It is kind of like a multiverse. It was funny. I was talking with um, with Stella, Fair of Magics, mm -hmm. and she was uh, rewatching um, the Four Kids dub, and she was like, "I can't believe how much like just the lengths that they went to like re-edit all of this. Like, it's like a it's not a completely different show, but like the way that it's presented, it is very different. Um, yeah. And is and it took a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of like." attention to detail you know like yeah. um and so i i love the dub that i grew up with and like i just like i appreciate you know like it it for what it is and i know that it's not true to the original italian or even the the Cineloom dub but um man it just it makes my heart so happy <laughs> yeah i think it's amazing i think it's a very amazing thing I, I as i told you i was a little obsessed with that theme the four kids version i have yes. the one dvd with the four kids um I, I think it just have like three chapters i don't know i don't even know why they sell it here like it was in <laughs> english i don't yeah. know it was on blockbuster i remember yeah and wow i found it and i was with my dad like can i buy this yes. <laughs> this is a treasure <laughs> this is from another world <laughs> yeah honestly yeah yeah and i was like oh my god and i remember uh, on youtube i found the intro like that we are the wings we are the wings come join come the club, join the club. And i was like wings. oh my yes. god this is the best song <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it yeah uh yeah oh my god that was my <laughs> childhood i love it that just made my heart so happy um so similar to you finding the like the popsicles in the store yeah, like popsicle, randomly yeah. popsicle mm -hmm. yeah. um, <laughs> i have a similar story so 
I was <laughs> traveling with my family. We were um, going to visit my grandmother. She lives in a different state than we do. And mm-hmm. so um, we stopped at a gas station, like just randomly, a, a, just a gas station. And they had this oh my Winx God. Club Christmas ornament. Oh my God, that's amazing. It was and it's so beautiful. random. Thank you. <laughs> it was so random. I was like 10 years old and I was like, you guys, can I buy this? And they were oh like, what? God. They're like, sure. I was like, you don't understand. Like literally this is a treasure. <laughs> like, like you said, like, this is literally a treasure. Like they had Bloom and Stella and Flora, which I classic. Know. <laughs> you know classic, uh, yeah. <laughs> doesn't have anyone else it's fine um <laughs> but they have bloom stella and flora and then um but they kind of their faces kind of look a little silly they look like hand painted i guess so um <laughs> this was the only one that looked like really like the true character um, oh so my God, yeah that's great super funny i don't know if, oh. yeah oh yeah oh my god <laughs> But super I think it's, it's super cute. It's super yeah. cute. That's amazing. That's a great part of not having too much merch in our countries. Yes. <laughs> because we felt that real rush of, oh my God, this is a treasure. This is something amazing happening. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. And I think that's probably what like was so exciting about watching Wings Club too. Like yeah. that added an element of it for sure. Was it was like this like, unknown kind of like hard to get thing um for us yeah. I guess so yeah, yeah it was like it was like a treasure hunt it was like we were like experiencing this special thing that was really exclusive you know like <laughs> yeah exactly like a secret club I don't know yes, a secret yeah. society <laughs> yeah it's amazing I just remember that in one random year KFC uh in Mexico yeah. came out with wings merch but they were so rounded they didn't even tell an ad again i have to look this up oh my gosh yeah (laughs) they just got the ugliest like keychains i don't know It it was like the wings wings and they were very ugly but i have one because i went to kfc and i was like can I have this? Because it's about wings love. It's ugly. I know it's ugly, but but I want it. That is so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I didn't even know that. Do you for yeah. real? No, but in my oh. home, I will take a photo when I go to my home. I think I'm yes. traveling this weekend. So okay. I have it. I, I think I have it in the bag. I didn't open it because it, it, it was ugly, but <laughs> yeah, yeah but it was Wings Club. So <laughs> yeah, it was Wings Club. And it was so weird to have something official here in Mexico. A lot of yeah. things just like came from another part. Some people get random stuff. Right. But it was very, very. And I think it was on the time where Secret of the Lost Kingdom came out. And okay. I remember it just like. I don't know. I got excited because I thought they were going to have the movie on on the cinemas. I thought yeah. like maybe if KFC have these toys, maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. I remember seeing the trailer of the of like the Wings Club movie and just mm-hmm. thinking like this is big. Like this is like the culmination of everything that I've experienced the past like three to four years and here we are you know like it was like this thing (laughs) oh I was so excited and then it didn't come out in cinemas and I was like no it came out in Europe in cinemas but no not here (laughs) it was so sad because you have that little hope in your heart like (laughs) it's going to come I know (laughs) someday (laughs) I know. Yeah. Oh, and then I was thinking, okay, like, you know, once Nickelodeon got like the rights to it and, you know, started producing, I was like, okay, this is our chance. We're going to get a Winx Club yeah. movie in the cinemas. It was going to be great. And they aired it on TV. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, oh, I was very mad too. And with the live shows too, because I thought oh one day they were going to do a live show in Mexico. Yeah. I was ready. I was ready for that moment. <laughs> right. But, oh my gosh. Yeah. I felt like, I mean, and I had just always assumed that like places like, I mean, Spanish speaking, like, you know, countries did really well with Wings Club and especially Latin America. I was assuming 
that Winx Club mm-hmm. was like super popular. And so this is yeah. so funny to hear that like we have very similar <laughs> like yeah, experience stories. Yeah. I I saw I, I was thinking that yeah that was the best places for Winx Club to be popular, but it didn't just happen. I don't know. I remember that um because again the time zones the the little this this problem yeah, <laughs> about, yeah. <laughs> uh, in mexico i think in netflix it came out about like three in the morning or four in oh, the morning wow. a thing like that yeah and i was awake like in my bed with my tv and i really was i was very tired because it was i think it was a friday but mm-hmm. like in three in the morning so yeah. i was like <laughs> with the tv on and i have to watch this before everyone <laughs> and then the, it was very very exciting and um in mexico i don't know about the other actors the voice actors mm-hmm. but there's an uh the voice actor that gave the voice to riven in mexico okay he started to make lives in his instagram talking about wings club in that moment and oh that was so, that amazing. so cool yeah. and he was oh. talking about his opinions and what he thought and that he was invited to dub another seasons if they yeah. came out that season nine we we're waiting for <laughs> and i was like yeah <laughs> and i was like this is this is happening like he started talking about the show again and everything is happening I, i'm i was very very happy with this oh yeah Uh, that is so cool that he like was was uh sharing about it in his stories i love that um gosh i don't know if like the four kids like actors and and actresses for the for the voiceovers i don't know if they like i don't know i don't know if they take ownership of their wings club roles you know as much as like (laughs) as much as like maybe some other countries might um because they ha- they've done so many other like popular voices that mm-hmm. like maybe it's not you know like someone like kiki palmer is never going to be like yeah well i voiced aisha you know and, <laughs> and the yeah, nickelodeon yeah. dub of like you mm-hmm. know like stuff like that i feel like more people like um like the uh, the rest of the cast of the nickelodeon dub um might you know be more you know prone to take ownership of like yeah i was on the show called wings club and it was really fun but like big bigger people like that um that are i i wish that they, they would be like yeah it was a great time and this is what i did you know but it's whatever yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it's because it's amazing to to know that for them it was a special too yeah because um i remember with with this voice actor i follow him i knew uh, who he was since I was a child because I love uh, Spanish Riven's voice in yeah. in Mexico dub. I love it. It's like so uh, deep and I don't know. I think it's perfect <laughs> for him. I love yes. that voice. And I remember I memorized his name. And when Instagram and stuff came out, I was like, does he have some Instagram? And I was like, <laughs> I need to follow him. Yes. And I remember. <clears throat> He always talked about all the shows he dubbed except for Wings Club. He always talked about this and that. And I was like, like, a, like a little sad, like maybe it wasn't cool for him. Maybe it was like, I don't know, a shame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but yeah. I was like, mm. and suddenly he started talking more about the show. And when Fate came out, he started talking about of it. Of course. Yeah. He actually sent me a voice note. Uh, yeah uh, that <laughs> that's was, so cool that's so cool but i uh, he like erased it uh, and i didn't save it <laughs> oh no <laughs> but i have it right here just like the oh. evidence that it happened and <laughs> he made riven's voice and he actually gave me a hello like if he was riven that was the most special day of my life i was like oh my so god fun. <laughs> yeah, <I> was- <laughs> Ah, does Riven just say hello to me? Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! I love that so much. My favorite, um, not Lisa Ortiz because she did the, uh, she was the voice actress that did Musa and Icy and mm-hmm. um a couple of other characters on and Digit 
mm-hmm. on uh yeah the four kids dub mm-hmm. but um my second favorite um actress who played Stella just followed me on Instagram and I oh like my God. freaked out <laughs> what that's amazing oh yes. my god so um yeah so I'm like super excited I want to reach out and not be creepy about it but I want to reach out <laughs> and be like so hey <laughs> Yeah. Remember this show that you dubbed like 17 years ago? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to yeah. be on my podcast about it? <laughs> yeah. that, that, that is amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Uh, I yeah, think if, if she follow you, I think she still likes it, right? Yeah. 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 Maybe. Hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. Good. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that's amazing. Because the voices, I think they give so much emotion to the show, right? Yes. And everybody, because I heard on um the episode Stella recorded with you, I heard that she has like in her heart the German voices, and you had your voices, and I have mm-hmm. my voices, and I yeah. think that's part of the soul of the show that's amazing mm-hmm. I think oh my god <laughs> and what's what's even cooler is that we all grow up with these different versions but we're all still so connected by the the story of it which yeah. is really cool which goes back to like the really good storytelling and the first three to four seasons of Winx Club which I think is just still to this day unmatched by any other piece of content that they've put out but that is you know just my opinion (laughs) yeah (laughs) they were contradicting a lot of things and i don't know why not anyone told a world (laughs) like in production (laughs) i don't know what i don't know it feels so weird because they were like very important things that they were just like kind of forgot like for example, in season eight, I think it's season eight, right? When Riven mm-hmm. and Musa like get back um, together. Yeah, that was so weird. I was like, it was. I from- want. Oh, what? oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I know. Do you think that they should have gotten back together in season eight? I think. I think. Oh, I have a lot of thoughts with reviews. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts because I agree they are very toxic. Because, but I think the writers that are evil, <laughs> they decided to put more toxicity of what was necessary in the relationship. Yeah. Totally, because uh, in season one, two, three, and even four, I think they were they were growing up. They were understanding yeah. the other, and they were because both of them come from problematic past we don't talking mm-hmm. about very healthy people in right. their past even Musa lost her mom and mm-hmm. her father he didn't she didn't have a good relationship right um, and that was some points that didn't make them get along very well but then they decided to I don't know to dramatize more like that like yeah. ah they are so they are fighting <laughs> all the time and Riven is such a bad person I don't yeah. know why they did that I don't know why they did um the part where Riven is ignoring her and just like throwing his boomerang like a loser oh my God. <laughs> I don't know I get so mad at that scene because I felt that's not the way Riven was going no no no. it's like every it's like everyone's character development took like huge like three huge giant steps back and it's like we're at like zero again and it's like why (laughs) yeah totally everybody they be they were becoming more immature persons Mm -hmm. they were get angry more easily they were make drama more easily stella was becoming that weird funny weird Dumb person blonde, yeah. yeah exactly oh. i was like what are you talking about <laughs> you is my them favorite grow. character and like the the fact that oh just the fact that they reduced her to that just hurts my soul so much yeah. <laughs> like she was it's so totally. like head you know headstrong and like outspoken and she was quirky and fun but like she wasn't dumb yeah. oh, it just, <laughs> exactly. oh my god it exactly. makes me so mad <laughs> 
Yeah, that uh, and as you were so mad with Stella, I was so mad with Riven and Muse yeah. relationship because I thought that would be a very cool relationship, um, a very deep relationship where they could actually have talked about Riven's past and right. yeah, and talk about Musa dealing with her problems with her father and her future and i don't yes. know they had so much potential oh, and they decided to blow up <laughs> i know but i do like the um the realization in uh six right it's six that they break up um because yeah. the, he's not in seven so um like i i do i think that that is like a big sign of growth of them like like realizing mm-hmm. their differences and realizing that it's not going to work I honestly think that they should have stayed broken up, but they could have been friends because that would have been a great story to have told, you know, like realizing your differences, realizing that it's okay to care for a person so much, but then also to not be in a relationship with that person. You know, I think that that's, that's a huge like moment that you could have told, (laughs) but instead. (laughs) Actually, yeah, actually I I was, I I have hope on them, (laughs) on the writers. (laughs) Yes. Because when they broke up, uh, something broke in me too. <laughs> um, <laughs> when when they broke up, I was very sad because that was my childhood favorite uh, couple. And it's still yeah. my favorite couple, I think, because it reminds me of that emotion I had with all the things of Rebusa. Yeah. But uh, when they broke up and Riven, like, he's gone, I was like, oh, okay, I think they might explain that or I don't know maybe he come back and tell us something very I don't know mature or something that he lived like like in season one when he escaped from the tricks and they he comes with these old reflections that I I went and go and grow yes but no he's just returning and hey I'm back they found me where we don't know he's just back (laughs) right we don't get to hear anything about where he's been what he's learned how he's changed we just know he's back and we just have to assume that he's changed what yeah no exactly (laughs) that is the I don't know I was very mad because with season seven he was not appearing I was like oh okay that is sad because that's not my favorite character yeah okay maybe he comes back with a very good explanation of this but no that was horrible that was a time yeah that was a time where they could explain what happened in Riven that didn't let him being a totally good person or being mature or treating people with more kindness I don't know maybe he went to therapy but we didn't know (laughs) one could hope horrible that was really horrible oh oh my gosh do you know the the sci-fi original series um called magicians no um it's on netflix it's a really good show if you ever get a chance to watch it to me thank you um it it is also very um uh very adult it's like rated Mm -hmm. like to tv mature or something but it um to like ev- every time I watched it, it's got so many seasons. But every time I watched it, I was like, "This is what Adult Winx Club would be." Like they have like the magic school. They find out they're they're regular people that find out that they're magicians, and like there's oh God, like magic great. worlds and all this stuff. Like it's just such a good show. But um, but yeah. So like they did to me. Like I was like, that is the level that like Winx Club live action like can still be. Um, of course there are, there are some overtly like edgy things in that show as well. So it's like, I don't know if anybody really knows how to do that genre well. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. But I think in other shows, it comes more natural. Like they're edgy, but in a natural way. This was a little weird. Like they started (laughs) to add things in the script. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like. Like like when Sky was like, you got slow this summer, and then Ribbon was like, I got high this summer. I was like, <laughs> that was, what? That was so weird. Oh that my god. So <laughs> yeah, a lot of things come out that I was like, okay, that was unnecessary. Stop being, stop trying to be so cool. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh my yeah. god. That so was fun. that was so weird. But the rest of the story I think it was very good written. Especially because it's my favorite character, especially yeah. Riven. I think it was a very good character because that sense stays with him that it was like he wants in that scene when he's actually worried for Sky. The Sky is like ignoring him because he's his, his business. Yeah. That is exactly the point with him. He's like trying to be friend, but people betraying him and yeah. making him feel left out. And then he went like, okay, let's go with Beatrix. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, and yeah so totally. Funny. And Beatrix was a very good character. I okay. loved her. Yes, she was a great character. <laughs> I, for some reason, she annoys me so bad. <laughs> yes. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because she looks like she's 12 and I'm supposed to think she's like this baddie. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking totally. like Icy was like the baddest witch in all of Cloud Tower. You know what I'm saying? Totally, like, I'm thinking yeah. like, man, I need someone that's like, giving me like she will cut me you know like yeah, I look so. at Beatrix and I'm like mm, you don't give me those vibes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah. Uh, but I did like her fashion and I did um I'm I don't know like she she did like Sadie overall like did the the role justice I will give her that like Sadie's incredible nothing against Sadie I'm sorry Sadie that I said that you look 12 uh, <laughs> I'm sorry Sadie <laughs> if you if 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 Sadie Sorrell like listens to this show I am so sorry <laughs> we're we so sorry but we love you Sadie <laughs> we love you anyway love you. <laughs> bonus question what was your favorite parallel to the original series that was in Fate um, some people will argue that there weren't that many, but after like watching it myself and analyzing it for the podcast, like there were actually a lot more, I feel like than people realize okay. like the different things that maybe, oh. uh, mirror things that happened in the original series. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Like... So like, like mm -hmm. when Bloom goes down into the old part of Althea to look for um, oh, okay. like Answers. more evidence about Rosalind, but but then Sky shows up, and that's very reminiscent of when Sky oh, yeah. went to go help her find you know stuff at Clotar. Yeah, yeah, so stuff like that. Oh my god, I haven't think of that. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry, that was like a. I just thought <laughs> oh, of it. Yeah. No, no, don't, don't worry. I think it's a it's a good question actually. I I don't know. I think they personally, I think they did a great job in general and in yeah. these scenes i think they made it very good because it didn't feel forced it felt very yeah. natural in all cases uh that natural that naturally should be applied to the edgy things but they decided <laughs> to not apply it there yeah you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah but in the scenes i think it was very natural Actually, even the relationships with their parents that they decided to change because in the original series, she has a very good relationship with the parents. Yeah. Um, I think they made it very um, good. It doesn't feel like some weird forced stuff. And yeah. Yeah. With the original scenes that they made in, the, in Fate, it didn't even feel like you couldn't recognize them. Like this is from another stuff, right? Right. Yeah. It felt natural. That's my yeah. opinion on that. What do you think? Yeah. Um. I no. I agree. I feel like um. It, like you said, wasn't forced. It wasn't obviously shot for shot, line for line. You know, a retelling yeah. of the story. It was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a whole new take on it, which I thought was cool. I really liked the part where. Beatrix brings Bloom to Astrodel. Obviously, Beatrix isn't trying to like um, confuse Bloom. She's actually trying to um, help her figure out where she's from because at that point, you know, um, Beatrix believes, truly believes that they're both from Astrodel. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, I feel like that was very reminiscent of when Bloom did go to Cloud Tower in the original series and the witches trick her to think that she's actually a witch 
um which is very interesting because it's like bloom now thinks she's from this place called Asterdal, but then which was a place full of witches which i don't know if beatrix knew that um yeah it when she was bringing her there but um it just seems like the connections to me it may be <laughs> this may not be like a strong like case for it but to me it feels like that was very much um a connection to when the tricks kind of uh made bloom believe that she was you know a witch yeah. Um, yeah so. you're so right you're so <laughs> right i haven't thought of it <laughs> i was like right now i was like oh my god you're <laughs> right <laughs> oh my god you're right uh, i've had a lot of time to think about these things with this podcast <laughs> oh my god that that's amazing i really really think this series is made with so much um i don't know in a careful way that we have space for making theories and for making stuff like what are you saying because yeah. it, it's well written the mm -hmm. things that are not well written it doesn't have a space for that because it just don't make sense a lot of things yeah. like the last season <laughs> like, <laughs> right yeah, yeah. so oh. we just can imagine in based on the logical and this serious is very logical in um in the fantasy right mm -hmm. so it's it that's very cool that's very very yeah. cool <laughs> i i love it i really i really like um uh fate a lot fate a lot i actually was very mad at people not liking it i was like why stop right yeah <laughs> yeah it's funny it's fine people have their own opinions and i'm fine with yeah, that yeah, just yeah. like yeah. let people enjoy what they enjoy and if they enjoy fate i mean it doesn't hurt you so you know yeah yeah that's totally, my opinion totally. yeah totally we, we respect everybody yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we friends of everybody I, i'm just trying to <laughs> take out my anger <laughs> oh yeah i think that our little details um that were like oh okay it's okay but the fact that didn't like me were that i don't know in your opinion i think they try to be too edgy <laughs> oh yeah for sure at one point they, yeah, yeah totally i think in one point it was like okay i get it they are edgy stop <laughs> stop please I'm it was cringe. almost cringeworthy like how <laughs> edgy they try to make you're like oh no god please stop like no like real adults like don't we don't say these things we don't do these things I also wish that they were not um if they were going to make it that edgy um I wish that they had actually put them at college age like 18 19 mm. 20 year olds not 16 17 18 year olds oh, yeah. because mm -hmm. um I feel like that would have aged it up a lot more um yeah. because I mean sure it's done by the same guy that did vampire diaries sure they were <laughs> teenagers you know in that series yeah. as well I don't know I just think that um it would have been it would have brought it up a lot more for yeah. for me oh. as as a as obviously an older Winx fan you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like totally, I'm totally. supposed to think this kid who is literally 16 years old is hot like no yeah, yeah <laughs> like, that can't. was so weird I'm 26 yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. so weird I don't know about you but it's supposedly to be for us right for right. our age and people I think, that grew up with the show yeah yeah exactly and I think it has a lot of Gen Z vibes and I was like but why <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't that know. is a very good point I hadn't yeah. even thought of that yeah <sighs> that's a good point and actually I wished but it's also more budget that they didn't like mix Althea and Rethentine. I know. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, because especially I think in the series and more in the last seasons are left out, are just like accessories <laughs> in yes. one point. And <laughs> with this mix in that they are just part of Althea, but doesn't seem like a very important part. They're just like... <laughs> they look like the security staff <laughs> yes yeah what's up with that what is so happening? i think yeah i think that made more strong the idea of specialists just being 
accessories and yeah. people who doesn't have a lot of story by themselves. That's sad. I yes, <laughs> very sad. And like, I would have loved, oh my gosh, it would have been amazing to have had like all this like ancient lore and backstory of the different schools. But now we don't oh, have yeah. that because they're the same school. And even yeah, exactly. Althea, they're like, you know, spinning it as well, this used to be a military school. It's like, what? No, this yeah. is a magic <laughs> school. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you talking about? What military? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think another element, they um, like, quit or erase I don't know and I actually think it doesn't should be so expensive why would they don't introduce switches and yeah. why Beatrix why Beatrix is a fairy I don't know I have a what? theory I think that Beatrix oh is God. gonna be a witch I think that I think that Asterdell because they were all blood witches I think that oh she's God. going to be like a witch and that wow. makes sense that would be so great that would, would be, be so, so cool. great that would uh. be so cool i would be very mad if that doesn't happen because i think beatrix is a witch with all of the letters she had oh major witch vibes <laughs> oh, yeah with the best intention <laughs>